It's my feel good breakfast show. A very warm welcome back. This is your feel good breakfast show, Expresso on SABC3. Happy Friday. Now, here's something that a lot of you might not have thought of the fact that many people that are living in, uh, living on the breadline or people living in rural areas are actually dependent on working horses and donkeys to provide transportation and to provide an income. And so, in this way, these animals actually contribute to sustaining families, communities, and to the economy in, in, in a, way, a manner that many of us might not actually consider. Consider. And caring for these animals is a matter of pride for some loving owners out there. My horse's name is Tia. Tia has been with me for a couple of years now, and she's been quite good to me. And she helps me with quite a lot of things. I earn a lot from her by collecting scrap metal and taking it to the scrap yard. And by so doing, the money that we're earning, we're actually sharing it. And I buy her food and I also buy her shoes as well. That's how we actually look after each other. Tia, as she is my horse, the way I look after her, when I'm not next to her, she gets so lonely. And when I'm also not next to her, then I get so lonely. So that is how we actually uh, try to put the relationship together so that we can be close to each other. One assumes that the need for cart horses and donkeys would decrease in view of modern transportation. But in some parts of Africa, their prevalence is increasing and they continue to be favoured by many in South Africa as they are versatile and sometimes more economical. The reason why with this horse of mine that I don't actually use a car is because of it's going to cost me a lot, it's going to need petrol, it's going to need whatever the car needs. But with the horse, it's because of now it's going to need food, it's going to need shoes, and it's going to need to be maintained, which is what I can actually afford at the moment. And it can also go wherever the car can go. We help each other. And without her, I'm not going to be myself. Leaving the clothes that I've got on is because of this horse. The animal's welfare is top priority and can render a family without income. So organizations like the National Horse Trust support owners with education, run clinics to help keep the animal healthy, and do inspections to check the horses aren't working while injured or ill. There are thousands of working horses that have to work to earn people a living and we are there to assist them and educate and to make sure that the animals are healthy. We have lots of educational workshops for owners in underprivileged areas. Those are very exciting. We teach people how to make harnessing, how to look after their animals, how to grow feed for their animals in winter. It's a really nice part of our job. The relationship between us and them, it actually included in a way that they actually wanted us more often now because of now there's great things that we're offering. We're admitting their horses as well, like equines as a whole, and bringing them back as well in a healthy condition, it was a great pleasure for them. That's how the relationship got so well. The main goal is seeing a real improvement of these equines so that they can be fit to do their work for them and also for, for, for the owners or as well as the drivers to look after them in a proper way. As a qualified farrier, I teach horse owners how to shoot their horses through our educational program that we are currently running in the township so that they'll be able to use it in future. Firstly, looking at their hooves in the morning, making sure that they check their hooves, they check their horses if they are all well-being. And then again, most common new one is checking their harnessing and their bridles so that they don't use Bridles that have rust, they wash their bridles, they wash their harnessing, it's not hard, they don't rub their horses on their shoulders. And again, making sure that their horses are healthy and eating well and fresh water at all the times. With this horse of mine, ever since I've had it, and even before I got introduced to this animal welfare, it used to be a battle for me. But ever since I met with the Highfield Horse Care Unit, it's been a great pleasure and a great help that I've learned quite a lot of different things that I used to do before up to now. Like, for instance, when he wants shoes, you know who to contact. When the horse needs food, you know where to go. When the horse is sick, he knows where to report. And with ever anything that the horse needs, that's what is actually learned from our side. The owners of these hard-working animals love and respect them for what they bring into their lives. And with a little help, they can show their appreciation with good care and a healthy life. Okay.